this video on how to construct our sumo bot, I'm going to show you how to cut out and bend the aluminum chassis. So in your kit you're going to get a piece of aluminum and this is what we're going to bend to make the chassis and you get a smaller piece of aluminum that we use to bend into the battery containment bracket. Today we're going to make a chassis for our sumo bot. I've given you a nice layout here and um, what we need to do is take our piece of aluminum and bend it into a chassis. Now I've got an example of a fairly finished product here. Um, I've cut out the front for the uh, surface mount LEDs. Now on mine I've cut a little too large here. Um, the other thing I want you to note is that this bottom line here has to be parallel to the top line so that when it's uh, so when it's facing on the ground okay you can see that the front end is roundish at the front and pulled up a little bit at the back um, and on this side we can see that it's flat all the way across if your chassis ends up a little bit bent it's, it's going to end up digging on one corner and you're just going to end up running around in circles. So we need to be careful of that. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is that this little guy has to fit in the box when it's done. So it took me a couple of bends to get the back end here so that it would, uh, would be small enough to fit in the box. Um, I also had to change my connector on the back here and bend the pins up rather than having stick out uh, otherwise it won't fit in the box either. So this little sumo bot here has to fit in the sumo bot box and you can see it's a fairly snug fit. It's, it's competition ready. It's in a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter box ready to go. When making the chassis, the first thing that we're going to need to do is make sure that our piece of aluminum fits in the sumo box. And as you can see, this is a little bit too large. They're kind of rough cut to 4 inches by 6 inches. So originally, I used to cut these uh, pieces out for you, and they used to be fairly close, so we just needed to file them down slightly. But now that I've been ordering them from an outside source, they come pre-cut to uh, 4 inches by 6 inches, and you can see it's slightly larger than we need it to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the edge with a marker, so I can see where it needs to get to. And then I'll turn it around the other side and mark it with the marker. And now using a ruler I will line up those two endpoints and just draw a mark all the way down the edge. So as you can see this is a fair amount to be filed off so rather than using a file to try and reduce the size of our board I'm going to show you how to use the shear. So this is our smaller shear as you can see, it looks like a little guillotine. Do not put your hands under there, it's very dangerous. You pull the arm down and it cuts whatever board you put in there. We use the smaller one for printed circuit boards. Please do not use this one for aluminum because you will dull the blade and we need it sharp for our printed circuit boards. So this is our full size shear that we use for cutting aluminum. You can see we have a large handle on here, so we can get a lot more force on the blade. And this is the one we're going to be using for cutting a wall. So this is our piece of aluminum placed into the shear. And it's very important that you hold it down firmly with your hand before you pull the lever down. Because as the guillotine comes down and cuts into the aluminum, it has a tendency to pull it sideways. So to line the aluminum up, you need to look down in this slot right here. So looking down inside the shear, you can see the back edge of it, and you can see these little fingers moving down. So when I slide my piece of aluminum in, 
you can see it sh slowly showing up. So you want to get the cut line just in front of all those little fingers. Now you want to try and get it as straight as possible. That looks approximately right for where we want to cut our piece of aluminum. Now remember to hold onto your aluminum firmly as you move the lever down to slice off that piece of aluminum. Out of the back end of the shear will fall the piece of aluminum that you've just cut off. So now when you try to line your aluminum up with the box, you can see it fits a lot better and you'll have a lot less to file off. I take a file and take the sides off. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Uh, we, we didn't use the belt sander for this because we really don't want aluminum dust getting into our lungs. It'll kind of tear our lungs apart, so we don't have the proper respiratory equipment to do that, so we're not going to use the uh, belt sander on our aluminum. Also, the aluminum is a little uh, tougher on our uh, belts, and uh, you'll end up ripping our belts. So, For those two very good reasons, we're just going to use the file to take off the excess aluminum. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of uh, cardboard and put it around my piece of aluminum and slide it in a fair distance down and tighten up my uh, vise to hold it in place. Now you want it to be held fairly rigidly so you don't want the aluminum sitting way way up high because then it'll wobble back and forth. Now I've kind of noticed you guys filing things and the proper way to file something is to file it with both hands. Right, so you've got both one hand on either side of the file and you can rotate your file back and forth. And you, what you want to do is you want to keep your file straight and level. So when you go across the aluminum, it takes off some at a time. Try not to push too much at the far ends because then you'll end up rounding your aluminum. So you just want to go across it straight and take off a fair amount. And when you take your aluminum out, where you file along the edges are going to be very sharp. So you're going to need to take your file and just knock off the sharp edges before you cut yourself. And then check and see if it fits in the box. As you can see, it's close, but I need to take a little bit more off so it'll fit in there smoothly. When you're done uh, filing your aluminum, uh, make sure that it fits in the sumo box. Try it both ways. Slide it back and forth. Try both ends. It's better to make it so that it's um, a little bit loose in the box. Uh, there's a tendency to kind of stop filing once it kind of fits snugly in the box. But because we have to make a bend in it, um, it could end up being bent on a bit of an angle and not fitting in the box. So it's better to make sure that it is loose in the box. Now as you can see, the aluminum looks fairly shiny. Um, that was because I used the cardboard in the uh, vise. The uh, fingers of the vise would have pressed against the aluminum. The aluminum being a soft metal, uh, you would have ended up damaging the uh, aluminum. All right, once I have my aluminum piece cut to size, um, you can see that this these dimensions are a uh, full size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out my layout and place it on top of my aluminum. So just take your layout and grab your scissors and cut to the uh, I'd cut to the inside of the line so once you have your layout cut out um, there's one more little thing I need you to do and that's to cut a little notch a little triangular notch right in the front and then we're going to cut another little triangular notch right in the back
Okay, so now you can see that this is going to fit on our aluminum. Uh, the only problem is I don't know if you've managed to keep the two edges parallel to each so other. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my ruler and what I want to do is I want to find out where the center of this aluminum is. Now you can see it's a little less than four inches so I want to find the exact center here and mark it off and then I'm going to turn it around this way and you can see what I'm doing is I'm placing it between the four inch end and the start of my uh, ruler and it looks like it's about a sixteenth of an inch in on either side so then I just mark my uh, my two inch mark right there once you have your center you can take a metal ruler and what we want you to do is scribe a line right down the center now this is your center line it doesn't hurt to scribe it a few times so I can see my center line and what I want to do is I want to line up this paper on top so that my center line goes exactly in the center line here so there's the center line on the aluminum, the center line on my layout. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is, now that I know that it lines up, I'm going to take a uh, glue stick. Uh, don't try and tape it down because it'll end up moving, right? So you want to make sure that you get the glue all over because when we start bending the uh, aluminum, the uh, paper is going to fall off. So make sure you get lots of uh, glue on there, especially along the center line. So then take your uh, layout and and don't push push it down immediately, right? You got a few. Well, I'm not going to say minutes, but you got a little bit of time and you don't want wrinkles in it so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut out the uh, the cutouts for the wheels uh, the cutout up front for the uh, LED display board and the uh, cutouts for the um, lower sensors I'm also going to uh, drill out these 3 16th inch holes that's where the battery wire runs through from the uh, bottom of the chassis. So if you take a look at the finished model here, you can see that the battery clip down here runs up and then the wires come up from inside there. Right there. So we need a hole for it to feed through there. The other holes are for the PC board and you can see that right now they pretty much line up with my board except you can see that these ones are already off a little bit the mounting holes seem to be about right and then as we bend this aluminum right this this could mount on the chassis in different locations so I don't want to drill out all my holes only to have them in the wrong location due to tolerances. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to knock out the big pieces with the punch and the two three sixteenths uh, I'm going to drill out and then the others I'm going to put in after when I come to final assembly. Right, so this is our punch. It's, uh, I think it's made by Greenlee. Um, Basically our aluminum is going to go under here and this punch is going to come down into the die cutting the aluminum and we bring it down with this handle. 
please don't break the glass. Okay. okay, so I'm gonna start by cutting out the wheel wells first. Um, not because it's easier to do, but because you may not have used a punch before and you want to get a feel for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come along and I'm going to punch a little area there. So I'm just going to come down and punch out a little area so you get the kind of the feel for how it goes. And you can see that it kind of sticks around the edge there. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a technique called nibbling. Right, so you just continually go along taking off a little bit more, a little bit more. Right, we're going to go up to that line. And then I come in a little bit. And then I go back across. Right, so as you can see, I'm taking off a little bit at a time. And we just nibble away until we get to uh, where we want to be. And it kind of goes without saying that you want to kind of keep the line straight. And if you pull it up too much, you're going to end up bending your aluminum. So be careful to keep your fingers out of the way and just nibble away a little bit at a time. So for the center, all I'm going to do is I'm going to come down right in the middle and it has no trouble punching in the middle. It's just that when you try and bring it back up, right, you're going to have so much force on here that your aluminum is going to bend. So what I do is I take a steel ruler and I'm just going to slide it underneath there. And remember to watch your fingers. And that should help keep it a little straighter. So then you can come over and start nibbling a little bit more out of there. Right, and after the first one, it doesn't stick so bad anymore. Come along and open that hole up. There, so there's the centerpiece for the uh, LEDs. Now these other ones for the sensors, they're going to be a little tricky. So take your time lining them up. And these ones are going to need that aluminum supported. So take your metal ruler, slide it under there, and slowly kind of lift it up until it releases. So there's our finished piece of aluminum punched out. Um, if you're building this at home or somewhere that you don't have access to a punch, right, you can use uh, half inch drills for these guys. And then you'd have to put a half inch drill in each corner and then go through it with a hacksaw blade, that kind of thing. Same thing with these guys, right? You would uh, cut it out with a hacksaw. Using a punch is a lot easier. Um, as you can see, I haven't done too much damage to the board. And I still have to come back here with a file and level this out. But I can take care of that later. Okay, so now that I'm done uh, punching my holes, you can see that the uh, aluminum that I punched out has dropped down below. So you'll need to come by with a little ash can and broom and sweep up after yourself. All right, so I finished punching out the uh, areas that I need to punch out. And like I said earlier, I want to drill out those uh, 3 16 inch holes. So I've got my 3 16 inch drill bit in here. Now as you can see there's bits of aluminum flying all over the place here. Uh, you can cut yourself on those so you're going to need to get your ash can and broom and sweep that mess up. And where I've just drilled through the aluminum with the drill bit, 
on the one side here I've got some aluminum sticking up so to get rid of that what you do is you take a large diameter drill bit and all you do is you go in and you kind of ream the hole out and that'll take care of those little sharp edges so these other holes for mounting the PC board I'm not going to uh, drill until after I've done these bends so I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna bend the uh, aluminum now alright this is our aluminum bender and basically what you do is you put your aluminum underneath and you line it up you put the clamp down and then you lift up the handles to bend your piece of aluminum okay so I'm gonna make my first bend here so I'm going to put it in and clamp it down so that line is just showing and you want to try and get it as square as possible and lock it into position now the first bend needs to be if you manage to keep your instructions right you can see that your first bend needs to be 73 degrees now you're not going to be able to bend it to exactly 73 degrees uh, one of the reasons is that when you bend the metal it has a little bit of a memory to it and it springs back so all we're going to do is we're going to lift it up until we get to okay so straight up is 90 degrees so I'm just going to take that out now and show you what 90 degrees looks like so that's 90 degrees right there so when you bring your piece of paper in because the paper is drawn to scale right you can see that that first bend right at 90 degrees it has to go further over so you can put it back into your vise so put it back in bring it down make sure it's tight clamp it down and then bend it a little bit further and then unclamp it bring in your paper and then see if you're close to that angle it's far easier to continue to bend further and further than it is to try and unbend something so if you've gone too far you'll put it back in here clamp it down and then you'll try and bring it back and the, the, it'll crease along here and you won't get a very good bend so it's uh, like I say, it's far easier to bend too little and then go back and rebend it afterwards. Okay, so that's our first bend. Now to do our second bend, I'm going to feed it in tail end first and then come down to our line. At least as close as I can see the line sticking out. The thing to keep in mind that when you bend aluminum, it has a little bit of width to it. So the bend, it actually stretches at the bend so you need to keep that in mind and the next bend that we're going to do it says it's going to be 107 degrees so that's going to be somewhere around now you want to try and keep this level with the back or the bottom of the aluminum so it's better to bend not enough than too much so once again I'm going to take it out and check it against my piece of paper. It looks like I could go with a little bit more bend. So I'm going to put it back in. And remember to clamp it exactly where you had it clamped before. Or else you will make quite the mess of it. And just a little bit more and I think I have it so the last final check is to make sure that the battery will fit under here and hold in place 
So once your battery slides all the way along there, not too tight, then you know you've got it bent to the right dimensions. Uh, just one point of safety, uh, these two terminals here are live, so don't bring them in contact with aluminum because aluminum is a conductor and you'll short out your battery. So the next thing I need to do is bend this back piece here and uh, before I do that I just want to check it in my sumo box. Alright, so I brought my sumo box over and my chassis to make sure that it fits. Now the only thing is, right there's my front end up to there, so here's my back end here, so I can see that it needs to be right it needs to be bent so it still fits in the box so how close am I to that line so if I put it in there right I need to bend just before the back of that line and this, this is gonna you know vary by how much filing you've done where those bends are so I'm just gonna move it back just a little bit about a sixteenth of an inch just to compensate for the width of the aluminum now it's also very important to make sure that you get this as square as possible right, you can see that by moving it back this way just a little bit now my drill holes are going to be in the wrong location and that's going to vary by person, right? So that's why I didn't drill those holes to begin with. So I'm just going to bend that. And it needs to be bent to 90 degrees. And you can see that I've bent it so that the width of my aluminum just comes inside. So I'm going to hope that this fits inside my box. And you can see that it is a very snug fit there but it's good enough so just by adjusting it on the fly for that back edge you can make sure that it fits in the box perfectly and you can see that I've actually bent back here a little bit further back about a sixteenth of an inch before that line and that all depends on this front end how close you get the front end to the specs on the sheet So, first try, I got it in the box. I'm pretty happy with myself. Okay, so I finished bending my aluminum. Uh, the only holes I drilled out were for the 9-volt uh, uh, battery clips to go through. Okay, and then you, then you can take your, uh, your marker, and you can mark these holes. And they'll be in exactly the place that you want them to be. Uh, these two here are for wires to feed through, so they don't need to be drilled. Uh, but this one's for the battery containment bracket. Right. So there's those holes. Um, now remember that these are just 1 8 inch holes for standard... Uh, bolts and uh, nuts to go on. Uh, the other thing that you need to worry about is the uh, motor gear set and as you can see by bending this further back the wheels won't turn if it's stuck up against the back bumper so you can adjust it forward just a little bit so that the wheels don't rub on any of the openings and you need to get them level uh, it's important to get them squared and then you can just go down there and mark that little hole and if you can't get a marker down there you can get your scribe down there and just put a little dent in there a little dent in there right so now I know where those two holes go you can go around it with a little black marker there so it stands out the battery bracket I'm gonna wait until I've got my gears in here bolted in place 
So once I got the gears and wheels in here bolted in place and then get my battery in. Right then I can see approximately how wide. Right, once I get them in here then I can see that my bracket goes across there. Right, and I can see that I need to bend it there and there to get around my battery. Everybody's batteries are probably going to be a little bit different in size, so I'll show you how to bend the battery strap when I put the final assembly. So for now, that's how to uh, bend the chassis. Mm -hmm.